Godot features a powerful built-in UI system. When you add nodes, you can find all the UI-related ones under the Control node. You have containers that allow you to automatically arrange their children, and you have all kinds of nodes to create tools or whatever you'd like. The UI of the editor is actually based on this UI system to give you an idea of the power you have at your hands. Now, for most games, you won't need most of them. You will need the containers, most likely, because they are quite handy. And then I'd say there are four or maybe five of them that you'll use in the vast majority of cases. You have the texture frame. This allows you to place an image inside a UI. You can tile the texture, scale it instead automatically, or keep its, its size, keep it centered in its square. Next up, you have the texture button. It's a button you can interact with, but with this one, you set the textures yourself. You can have the normal version, the hover texture, one when you press the button. You can have a special picture when the button is in focus or when it's disabled. You'll use that for mobile games all the time because it's very easy to skin that way. Next up, you have the texture progress node. It allows you to create progress bars, but also life bars. Not only horizontal one, you can also create vertical ones if you want, from top to bottom or bottom to top. And even radial bars, like I have here, going clockwise or counterclockwise. The label, you've probably seen it already. It allows you to print text to the screen. Now you can clip that text or, like I have here, you can make it wrap using the auto wrap feature. You can apply any font you'd like to it, and in particular bitmap fonts that Godot can generate for you. You have one example in this project. The last one I'd like to talk about is the 9-patch frame, which allows you to create uh, scalable frames where you retain the aspect of the initial texture. It's nice to create the background for a scalable dialog box, for example. For your UI images to render well, you'll have to import them as textures in Godot 2. If I load back the source PNG file, when we zoom in, you can see on the right side we have some artifacts. However, if I undo and move back to the imported texture file, it renders well. To import as textures, you have to go to the import menu and select textures. Now, as far as the mode is concerned, we want to import 2D textures. It's for a 2D game. And for the source textures, just go find your PNG files. When you do that, you can go anywhere on your hard drive. Godot will copy all the pictures over to your game project. But it will also set a few options, including the fixed border alpha, and it won't generate any MIP maps for 2D ones. And you have to set a target path where the files will be saved. I like to keep the PNG files in a source folder, and on the folder above it, I'll have the texture files. I'll choose this one and import the textures. If you go to the UI folder, you'll see .tex files, and they are just references to the source PNG files. If you delete one of those PNG images, you will lose the reference in the texture, and you won't be able to update it like normal. All those nodes inherit from the control one, so they all share a few properties. The first one is the anchor, and the anchor mostly makes sense when the control has a control parent. It affects the margin property that you will find down the inspector. But we'll talk more about that when we talk about containers themselves. Then you have a position and a size for every control that you can set directly in the editor. On top of that, you have a minimum size to force your texture or your control to be at least of a certain size. If I set this one to 128 by 128, when I scale it, I can't go below it. I'm still pulling the mouse, but it's not scaling down. However, I can keep scaling it up, no problem. You can also set the rotation and scale of your UI. You can add a tooltip for when the mouse is hovering over your UI element. Most of the time you won't need that. The focus neighbor is a bit more advanced. It's a property you will use to set which control Godot should focus the keyboard or the joypad controls on. 
when a user is um, actually navigating the UI with the keyboard, for example, using the tab or ship tab key. So you can use that to manually assign one of the neighbors in the tree to be the next node you will move to when the player is using the left joypad key, for example. Then the focus properties allow you to ignore all input from the mouse, for example, on the texture frame, that's often something you want. Then it can also stop the mail, so it, it will stop the input from traversing the UI. For example, say you have a game where you move the character with mouse clicks. If you click on the UI, you don't want the character to move behind the UI, right? So when you do that with the stop mouse on, the input will be consumed and it won't affect the characters in your tree. Then you have the size flags. Again, this is mostly for containers. It changes the placement and scale behavior of the control nodes when they're inside of a container. There's the theme that allows you to theme more complex UI nodes. However, it's not useful for the ones we see in this video. It's mostly for the more advanced ones. It's mostly for everything that's used for the editor. For example, the default buttons you can add. You can see they look exactly the same as buttons inside of the editor. Lastly, you've got the margin. It defines how the object is placed based on its anchor and relative to its parent. For example, my margin left and top is the same as my position. In that case, because the anchor is in the top left corner of my UI node and the margin is always relative to the anchor. It's a quick overview, but I think it's important to know that you don't need to learn all the nodes because there are dozens of them inside the control one and that you can do almost everything you'll need for your games with these five. So these are the texture frame, the texture progress, there's the label, the texture button, and the patch 9 frame. And as always, I invite you to download the project on GitHub to play with those base UI elements. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.